Welcome to this session titled Robots and Humans Drive Faster Time to Value at ConocoPhillips. My name is Peter Cook, and I'm the director for Robot for Every Person initiative at UiPath. This initiative serves to promote the content and methods to enable our customers to realize the value of everyone in an enterprise benefiting from automation, whether this be from ideation to usage and or creation. Joining me is a representative from ConocoPhillips. ConocoPhillips is an energy company charged with the important job of safely finding and delivering energy to the world. Today, we'll be discussing their vision to empower their employees to work side by side with UiPath robots, giving their people the freedom to focus on the human part of work. Hi, Jason, very happy to have you on today. Could you please take a moment and introduce yourself and your role within ConocoPhillips and your automation program? Absolutely, thank you. Yeah, so my name is Jason Townsend. I'm the director for our Application Development Services Center of Excellence here at ConocoPhillips. And what that means is as part of my role, I have our Robotic Process Automation Center of Excellence under me. Outstanding. So my understanding is your automation program has matured to not only take on attended automation, but also enable citizen developers. Was there a tipping point that led to the transition from unattended robots to enabling both citizen developers and taking advantage of attended automation? Was there a particular opportunity or challenge? You know, so what really, you know, kind of the genesis of our robotic process automation uh, program here at ConocoPhillips started with, you know, in partnership with our finance organization as part of a merging digital technologies for finance, you know, roughly a little over two years ago. Um, and during that effort, we were really focused on building, you know, the unattended bots, you know, looking for the, the big, the big prize, right? These big complex processes we could fully automate with unattended bots. We were, you know, got to where we we're building 25 of these per quarter. And we've been doing that for the last couple of years. And, you know, we went to UI Ford, I think it was three um, last year. And as part of that, you know, we heard uh, UiPath present on uh, Studio X. And as soon as we got back, we went to our management and said, okay, look, you know, we feel that attended bots and citizen developments or citizen automation uh, for attended bots is a bigger prize in aggregate than some of these processes we've been going after. Um, you know, can we get, uh, you know, some licenses of UiPath Studio X? And can we do a, uh, what we call an automate first, can we start driving automate first culture here at ConocoPhillips? Um, you know, and so we met with uh, AFTAB, Ahmed, who was our partner in finance. We met with uh, Dave Maybe, who is our um, kind of innovation manager here and yeah. started fostering this idea of a automate first culture and then moving, and that's what really led us to saying, okay, yes, we're gonna go with a uh, citizen automation, um, you know, attended bot kind of focus uh, starting in, in, you know, basically January, 2020. Right, so I'm understanding then, uh, so coming back with this idea and vision of the way you'd like to, uh, to proceed with your automation program, you then got that ex executive sponsorship uh, and and that led to propelling with with a pilot and and as it relates to that you know how did you get started with with rolling out and governing a tenant automations as well as Studio X? We really didn't do a pilot. I, you know I guess we can call it a pilot. Um, we negotiated a, a good license agreement with with UiPath. And UiPath's been a a great company to partner with. Anytime we we find issues uh, with a, the product, you know they're quick to. Um, help us address those. And, and so when Studio X and, and beta, um, back in January, it was in beta, you know, we were working with UiPath and giving feedback on how to get the tool uh, to where it was more, um, uh, you know, we could deliver it to all the various desktops in an automated fashion. And so there were some up front, some slow drivers getting, you know, Studio X to where we could easily deploy and manage that from the center and be able to do some governance. But while we were working with UiPath to address some of those, those gaps in a beta product, it wasn't G and it, you know, globally available at the time, we you know, quickly found out that with uh, citizen automation that the governance is very specific to the department or work group um, 
that you're working or trying to govern for, right? So finance had a different view on what they wanted governing, and go what acceptable governance would look like versus what maybe HR versus uh, HSE, with our, which is our health, safety, and environment um, would want. And so, you know, we quickly had to start meeting with each individual work group or department that was interested in partnering with us with this Automate First, uh, you know, kind of culture and work with them to figure out what was important to, for them to, to govern and quickly get that kind of rolled up into a, um, you know, a governance uh, program that we put into place. So we started with the sure. boilerplate and customized that for each departmental work group. Sure thing. In terms of, of personas, with we typically call self-users ones that create automations for themselves and then power users those that create for their team or their department or their business unit. Do you have both of those personas enabled? We do, absolutely. So, you know, one of the big things that we wanted to do, and so one of the ways we, we found, you know, I guess the, the best way we found to push out uh, citizen automation and get people really understanding uh, this automate first culture or, you know, like UI Pass says, a bot for every person um, was what we call botathons. And so we quickly um, saw that the best way to get people interested and really to understand, uh, you know, RPA and especially, you know, citizen um, development um, was to do these botathons. And in that we would do an hour or so of training on Studio X. And then, you know, some of my folks from the COE would work with, um, the people participating in the Bonathon to build automations for their work group, right? A lot of cases that might be something simple for themselves. You know, it might be, you know, I know for a big technical event we had here, uh, one of the things they wanted was to be able to send out an email to every person that registered with the sessions that they registered over that week for the symposium. Well, yeah. the person had Studio X, so decided, you know, I'm going to build a bot for this. Right. And so where a lot of people in the past would just kind of email all the calendars for all the sessions and let you kind of accept or decline, we were able to give a personal email with the exact sessions they enrolled because this person has Studio X and realized, hey, for my own personal productivity, I can give a higher level of service quicker by automating this with, you know, an attended bot. Um, but then we also have good examples where people take these bots back that they developed during these botathons, and the work group sees it. Oh, I want that too, and we push that out to other people in that work group uh, to be able to leverage and utilize. Um, sure, you know. So, hey. so for people that have attended these botathons, finding that value comes pretty quickly, and then you quickly find that some of it's for their own personal producti productivity, and some of it is for uh, their department or work group. And then the other piece is you find that some quickly become, hey, this has enough value, let's make it unattended, and then they work with the COE to convert that to a full unattended bot. Yeah. From your high-level framework for your botathons, it, there's a, a bit of an intro and a hands-on usage of the tool. Then with people having that understanding of what automation can do, now they're ready to, to discuss ideas of where automation can have a uh, major potential. And then they're also armed potentially with, uh, with how to provide ideas back to the COE or to their power users. Is that how it works? Yep. Yep. And, you know, we find, you know, so as part of the botathon, there's an upfront process um, where we use tools like the Automation Hub to gather the ideas. And then, you know, we also use that as an opportunity to coach. Um, you know, this is a good opportunity for automation. Hey, this is maybe not so good opportunity for automation. But in reality, we, we don't want to say no a lot of times because we really want people to understand that this is just another tool like Microsoft Excel, right? Engineers, people fall in love with Microsoft Excel. It's a great way to automate their job, um, but then they right. leave the company so they can support that, that macro that they wrote. Um, whereas with, you know, what they build in Studio X, they leave the company, we've got governance from IT, we can see that they build something, and hey, we've got some people that have expertise to be able to take this on. Um, yeah, you know, so we don't want to say no because there's not anybody looking over their shoulder saying you can't build that Excel file. So we really want citizen automation with Studio X to be that same way. But when we are using it as a learning example, as part of the botathons, we do want to make sure that it's something that is going to be a good teaching opportunity. So based on your journey to date, is there anything that you would have done differently to make progress faster? 
it's hard, you know, it's hard to say, you know, so I was pushing my supervisor early on in the year and I kept telling people, you know, to tell John, hurry up, right? Tell John to hurry up. We, we only have 25 people doing this right now. You, you know, but there was, you know, we were trying to go when this is a beta product, um, you know, and so there were some learnings and some, some growing pains we had to get out. But, you know, we started with zero people this, this year. We've got 415 right now. And we had 30 more sign up in the in the last week on top of that. And so, it, you know, it's it takes some time. I think, you know, the the biggest thing would maybe maybe be start with the botathon sooner. You know, I think early on we pushed out the training uh, videos that UiPath has that, that are good training videos. It's just some of that can be boring to people, right? There are some people that just really can't sit through. Uh, you know, a couple hours with online training, they'd rather get their hands in there, you know, touch it, feel it, see it, and, and get going. And so really moving forward with the botathons and the interactive way of learning and uh, getting that going sooner as opposed to later is probably a lesson. Um, yeah, and there's not much else. I mean, we, you know, maybe starting with attended bots as opposed to unattended, right? Um, you know, but uh, it's been a, a great opportunity, great great learning experience for us. So, final thing I'd, I'd like to uh, <clears throat> to to think about is for a business leader that's listening to us today, and automation has not yet reached their department. Do you have any advice for them? Yeah, get going. I mean, automation's uh, you know awesome, and I think you'd be surprised, right? You, you know, sometimes we can get caught up in trying to figure out ROI and whether the value is actually going to be there and, you know, get a small set and, and let some people go. Find those champions in these functions or in your business that, that can think a little bit differently. You know, give them, give them, you know, this tool and let them, you know, spend six months to a year on. I think you'll be surprised uh, at what they're able to automate. And it, it's not just your IT folks. I guess that's another thing I, I hear people think is, oh, this is an IT thing. I don't know, is Word and Excel IT? I mean, I, I guess IT supports it, but at the end of the day, pretty much, you know, everyone in the company knows how to use it. So, you know, Studio X really can be that way, um, you know, if you just give people a little bit of time, you know, and it doesn't take that much time. So, you know, we find that people pick it up pretty quickly, and then you'll be surprised what they're able to automate and kind of, uh, you know, the amount of time they're able to free up. So. Well, thanks so much for sharing your journey and some lessons learned with us. Very much appreciate your time. Well, thank you, guys.